my mom had me when she was 16, and I'm from Grand Prairie, Texas, and she worked four jobs and completely dedicated her life into making mine better. So to me, she is the definition of a strong woman, and I love her so much because she's taught me those values so much. Um, I have been acting my entire life, and I have known since I was first on Barney, you know, that purple dinosaur that I hung out with? <laughs> He's great. You guys are so motivating. I feel like I can say anything. <laughs> um, when I was 11, the point being is when I was seven, I wanted to be an actress, and I wanted to live my dream. And when I was 11, I had a casting director tell me that I wasn't strong enough to carry my own show. And I'm sure all of you have been told that you don't have what it takes and that you may not be good enough and you don't have enough people supporting you and you're being told all of these things when deep down it's all you want to do. You want to be a part of something great. You want to make something great. And it does more than knock the wind out of you. It crushes you when people try to tell you that you're not good enough. And it almost did for me, but there was my mom next to me, stronger than ever. And she said, the most important thing is to always trust in myself. If I have, if I'm doing something because I love it, I should do it because I love it and I believe I can do it. So she told me to keep going. Thank you. She told me and she taught me to turn the other cheek and let the credits, or let the critics be critics, and let us just trust ourselves. So for me, thank you. Two years later, I got my own show, and the first thought, the first thought wasn't, oh man, that girl when I was 11 said I wouldn't carry my own show, and I did. I mean, I thought about that for a little bit, but I thought about what my mom said. My mom was like, you have to trust yourself. And I realized if I didn't believe that I could do it, I wouldn't be able to be here. And I have, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say, I live a very blessed life. I have so much to be thankful for. And a lot of you are a big part of inspiring me because I don't think you get it and maybe you're not told enough, but you inspire me to be better and we should inspire each other to be better. I'm surrounded by people who are supposed to guide me and some of them have and others haven't. They pressure me, there's so much pressure. You gotta be sexy, you gotta be cute, you gotta be nice, you gotta be all these things. And I'm sure you can all relate. You all have pressure that you have to deal with every day. I'm sure with school, with work, with friends, with parents, with family, with parents, I know sometimes with mine. They tell me what to wear, how to look, what I should say, how I should be. Until recently, I had given in to that pressure. I lost sight of who I was. I listened to opinions of people and I tried to change who I am because I thought that others would accept me for it. And I realized I don't know how to be anything but myself. And all I really want you to know is that you are changing the world. I'm not changing the world, you're changing the world. And that's amazing. Please, please just be kind to each other and love and inspire people because let's do it, let's do it. Let's change the game, let's change the game. The most important thing is that we learn and we continue to learn from each other. Please stay true to yourself. Please just remain who you are and know that we have each other's back. All of us have each other's back. <laughs> I'd be lying if I said that I've never tried to make myself better by giving in, because I have. But I've learned from my actions, and for all the things I've done, I'm proudest of that. I've learned from my mistakes. I want you to know what it's like, that I know what it's like. Figuring out what types of friends you have, you are who you surround yourself with. I was the first 
I know nothing about technology. I know nothing about management. I know nothing about. But the only thing is that you don't have to know a lot of things. You have to find the people who are smart than you are. My first way is always find people who knowledge on computer smart than I am. Accounting smart than. For so many years, I always try to find the people who are smart than I am. And when you find so many smart people, my job is to making sure the smart people can work it together. And then, if smart people can work it together, it's easier. The vision they will believe. Because if stupid people can work it together easily, smart people can never work together. <laughs> So what it means to live your life on purpose means you understand the direction you're heading, but you remain agnostic as to the route. Most people try very, very hard to plan the route. In other words, what's your plan? People say, well, first, I'm going to work here for three years, then I'm going to quit and I'm going to do this, and then for four years, I'm going to... they got the route plan. And the question is, where are you going, right? And that, to me, is what it means to have purpose. It means to have destination, right? It's like waking up in the morning and saying, I'm going on holiday. So he says, well, where are you going? He said, I'm going on vacation, I told you. You're like, where are you going? Vacation, right? Um, and so how are you going to get there? You're like, well, I'm taking Route 95. So you've got the route planned, but you have no destination. And you see this in companies all the time. You know, why does your company exist? Growth. Great. Why are you growing? Why do you need to grow? What does growth mean? Because we're a company, we have to grow. And so they figure out all of these paths for growth, but they don't know where they're going. Mm. I would rather someone wake up in the morning and say, California. I'm trying to get to California, mm. and I don't care what route I take. I'm going to start down Route 95, and if I find a better route, I'm going to take it. If there's traffic on Route 95, I'm going to take an, a side road. So this is what happened in my career. People kept telling me that I was unfocused because I kept taking side roads. I wasn't unfocused. I was going around obstacles. So that's what it means to live a life of purpose. It means I live every single day of my life trying to get to an end point. In my case, to create a world in which the vast majority of people wake up every single morning inspired to go to work, feel safe when they're there, and return home at the end of the day fulfilled by the work that they do. That is the destination I'm trying to reach. I don't know how I'm going to get there, but I'm going to try every path I can to get there. Highly, highly focused. That's what it means to live a life on purpose. You can use your gifts, that's what you're really here to do, to illuminate the darkness in our world. So this is what I also know, that this, this, this moment in time, this is your time to rise. It is. Even though you can't go anywhere, you can't stand in line at Starbucks, you can't go to a party, you can't go to any place without, everywhere you turn, people are talking about how bad things are how terrible it is. And this is what I know. The problem is everybody is meeting hysteria with more hysteria. And then we just are all becoming hysterical and it's getting worse. What I've learned all these years is that we're not supposed to match it or even get locked into resisting or pushing against it. We're supposed to see this moment in time for what it is. We're supposed to see through it and then transcend it. That is how you overcome hysteria. And that is how you overcome the sniping at one another, the trolling, the mean-spirited partisanship on both sides of the aisle, the divisiveness, the injustices, and the out-and-out -out hatred. You use it. Use this moment to encourage you, to embolden you, and to literally push you into the rising of your life. Well, first of all, you don't need college to learn, it, learn stuff, okay? Everything is available basically for free. Uh, you can learn anything you want for free. It is not a question of learning. Um, there, there is a value that colleges have, which is like, you know, seeing whether somebody's, is, can somebody work hard at something, including a bunch of sort of annoying homework assignments and still do their homework assignments uh, and, and kind of soldier through and, and, and get it done. You know, that's, that's like the, the main value of college. And then also, you, you know, if you, you, if you probably want to hang around with a bunch of people your own age for a while instead of going right into the workforce. Um, 
So I think colleges are basically for fun and to prove you can do your chores, but they're not for learning. If you're going to be a hard worker, hard work doesn't just appear. You have to practice hard work. Uh, you have to practice effort. Um, you know, and, and I also encourage them uh, and, and try to help them understand that good things don't come easy. You know, with that effort, you know, uh, that's where you grow. That's where growth is. Some of the best times in my life when I've grown, it's when I've done something hard, uh, when I've overcome a fear. You don't realize that when you're doing it, but when you come out on the other side, you realize, wow, I've really uh, stepped up. So I push my girls. Um, what do your children want to be when they grow up? Because I know that you're the prime. Um... That has been some of what's helped me being First Lady. First, first of all, is knowing who you are and being confident in yourself, because they'll be, Clarissa, what do you say, pushing beyond other people's labels of you? Right? That's a big part. That's what we do to each other all the time. We don't even know each other, and we already determined from one glance meeting, one line, one word, one phrase, this is who you are. So you have to know who you are 